Hello everyone. My name is Anu Jindal and today I am here to talk about UPSC aspirants who just gave their prelims on 28th May. Now thinking of writing RBA examination and using the next one month more productively. The RBA grade B examination is scheduled on 9th July and on 31st July phase 1 and phase 2. If you are not very certain about your UPSC result and if you feel that you should be taking this chance to prepare for RBA examination then there's nothing wrong with it and I am here to give you the right timetable that you as a UPSC aspirant can use. Even if you're not a UPSC aspirant, you can very well watch this video and try and understand the kind of timetable that can be created by you using the timetable that I'm going to give you today. First of all, I'm going to divide the entire timetable into weeks and every week is to follow the same timetable. Therefore, you're trying to complete some things in one week and then you repeat the cycle week after week. This makes it very easy for everyone to follow. There are seven days in a week and I'm going to divide these seven days into certain tasks. First of all, two days should be kept only for tests. Before phase one, we will be focusing only on phase one tests, which means a Wednesday and Saturday. These two days can be kept completely only for tests. Through these tests, you're not only Toning your skills of phase 1, quant reasoning and English, you are also simultaneously trying to cover more and more current affairs. Now, what do you do in these two days? First of all, early in the morning, get up and write one complete test in two hours, just as you would write a test in the final examination. After that, spend about 5-6 hours on analyzing the test. When I say analyzing the test, what do I mean? It's very simple. For example, you are not able to solve a question of time speed distance from quant. This means that your concepts of time speed distance are somehow bleak or not very strong. And although you believed that you are good enough in time speed distance, that mock proves that your ability to cover time speed distance questions is not so good. Therefore, you are going to revise the entire topic of time speed distance by practicing about 10 15 questions. This will take some time, about half an hour. This way, you try and cover all the topics that you feel you are not able to solve properly in the given test. Out of 80 questions in general awareness, let's say you were able to solve about 35 questions and you are not able to solve about 45 remaining questions. That means you have to cover these 45 topics in that same day so that any question that comes from those 45 questions topics, you will be able to answer them well. This is how you analyze and use one complete paper and then only you move forward. Therefore, Wednesday and Saturday, these two days have to be kept only for analyzing and taking the mocks of RBA phase 1. Let's come to the third day, which is Sunday. Every Sunday is to be kept only for covering phase 2 syllabus. Why? Because after phase 1, you have only about 20 days to cover the syllabus and to revise the syllabus of phase 2. And you will not be able to do it in that amount of time. Therefore, why not take out four to five days before phase one also, so that uh, we are more relieved after phase one and we are not in a panic mode. So what do you do? You keep two Sundays for management and two Sundays for finance. I'm assuming that being a UPSC aspirant, you are thoroughly prepared of, for, for ESI, economic and social issues. Therefore, you can spend more time on management and finance syllabus. So, first two Sundays of June can be kept for covering management syllabus. How do you cover it in su such a small span of time? The marathon sessions that were carried out in, ma in May by me and my team will be very, very helpful in, uh, in, in, in uh, providing you the entire syllabus of man management in about 15 to 20 hours so that you can cover it very easily in about one to two days. So two Sundays for management, similarly two Sundays for finance, you will at least have 50-60% idea of the entire syllabus and you would be able to remember a majority of it as well. So this is how you use Sundays. Now you are left with about four days because you've used three days out of seven days in a week. In these four days, what do you do? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. These are the four days available to you. First of all, majority time of these four days has to be spent on covering the current affairs for both phase one as well as phase two. 
through PT365 Vision IS material and various other current affairs, you might already be uh, well versed with majority of the current affairs that is required for RBI. But a lot of current affairs is not taught in UPSC, which is also relevant for RBI. For example, RBI 247, for example, Spotlight. The factual things that are provided in Spotlight are not very useful for UPSC, but very, very important for RBI phase 1. I have divided current affairs into four parts. First is Spotlight, second is PIB 247, third is RBI 247, and the fourth is topic based current affairs. When I say topic based current affairs, I mean Topics like government schemes, economic survey, budget, census, family health survey, so on and so forth. These kind of things should be kept in one month and prepared together. And the monthly current affairs of Spotlight, RBI 247 and PIB 247 should be prepared month by month together. So, four days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, you are keeping for covering current affairs. But there is one more thing that you might have to spend some time on and that is content reasoning. If you feel that you are weak in content reasoning or not up to the mark of the requirements of RBI examination, then these four days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, a minimum, a maximum of three hours can also be used to cover, to revise, to tone your skills in content reasoning. So every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, four days, you are spending on two things. Three hours you are spending on covering either quant or reasoning and the remaining time you are spending completely on current affairs. This will give you a lot of confidence and a lot of time after phase one and between phase one and phase two because believe me, your objective is not just to write and clear phase one, it is to write and clear the entire RBA examination and that is possible only when you cover phase two, a part of the syllabus of phase two plus the entire current affairs required in phase 2 before phase 1 itself. This strategy can be used by non-UPSC aspirants also. The only thing that they can add on is economic and social issues syllabus. The, that is the only addition that you have to make, otherwise everything remains the same. A lot of students are asking about answer writing and essay writing. Although I will be helping you with answer writing and essay writing even before phase 1, I would recommend not to spend a lot of time on it now. and to focus entirely on it immediately after phase 1 and that is what I am going to do with you as well. As soon as we are finished with phase 1, we are going to spend the next 20 days completely on writing only. So this is it. I hope it was very, very yes, uh, useful and I am very sure that with this timetable of week by week coverage, you will be able to crack the examination in no time. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.